Okay, well then I'll shorten my spiel and just say that we're here with Island Artist Gallery and we've started this Zoom series because we want in this time of isolation to share our artwork with other people and in our community and other places. And I'm going to introduce our guest artist for tonight and um, his amazing woodwork. You are going to be thrilled. I just can't get over wandering around this wood wood shop and, and seeing all the things he does. Um, and But after this is finished, if you would like to go to our online store and check out his work there, um, it's www.islandartistgallery.com. And I'm sure that we'll put that in the chat. But Jim has some amazing bowls that he makes there. And without me babbling any further, I'd like to introduce Jim um, Kirkness and this he's going to be talking about this. Can you see this Ellie? Mm -hmm. This is his federal card table that he that has been taking up most of his COVID time and energy um, over these last few months and it's just a fabulous piece of art. And here's Jim Kirkness. Hello. Well, uh, this project is one of those projects that once you get into it, you kind of realize how much it takes. Uh, I went through millions of steps to get to where I am right now. And I was just going to try to take you into the various steps. Uh, it's a process, I can tell you. Um, can you see me over here? Yeah. This is how the whole process starts. You laminate one by fours of poplar and you do what's called brick laying, you do it, stagger the joints and stuff, and then you cut an inch and a quarter off piece off of it. And to that, you laminate, I'll well, turn it over this way. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I laminated mahogany veneer onto it. And this is called the apron. And as you can see, it is a half curve. This is called a, a federal demi loon card table. And the trick of it is, here are, here's the tops, by the way, that'll go on there. But these legs here hinge out on a wooden hinge, and it makes the table flips up and makes a round card table. Well, the processes to do all this are staggering. Uh, I laminate the mahogany on there with this, with the veneer on there and then I clamp. Cool, go ahead whenever you're ready. Okay, well this, to do the banding, you uh, take lots of layers of veneer. And like the black ones here, I, there's four layers of veneer, two of white of each section. And then I take and I clamp them, I glue them and clamp them in here to make what's known as a brick. And then you take the brick and this slides through the table saw like this and measures an eighth inch chunk off of each side of that. And then you lay those slices flat on some uh, packing tape with veneer on top. And you do that about three times, the first white, white veneer and then another white veneer and then black and white. And you make this strip of banding. And then I take this through the table saw, do 16th inch strips to get this. And this is what's inlaid around the apron and also around the legs and up on top up here. So uh, these are all the tools necessary here, if you could spread to show that, to even make the banding and the, the stringing. It's quite the process. Here, the stringing is black and white. You laminate layers of uh, holly and dyed poplar to get this 16th inch thick stringing. And then you go and you take a router and you route a, a groove in this mahogany leg where the stringing goes. And also, there's a curved arch up on top, up here. It's quite the process. And as you can see, uh, it gets quite involved on just having the, making the tools to do it. This here is 
the tool I use, as you can see, these legs are tapered. They're tapered on three sides, the back and both sides on this one and I taper them and what I made is tapering jig. Like this. Then run through the saw. And it starts out one and five eighths inch thick on the top end and it tapers down to seven eighths. Now, this banding is all done with hand tools where you, you notch it, slice it with a uh, knife, and then you miter these, the banding in there and go all the way around. And that's after you've done these ebony legs bottoms. You can see that's just veneer, black poplar veneer. So there is that we're at the legs. So I guess the next step is after you've gone, well, to do those legs, I don't know if you can see that, but they're dovetailed and notched and they slide in that apron. The apron fits in here. There we go, there's the dovetail. Yeah, and you do that by with the chisel and I did a 11 degree bevel on there and you cut that notch with the chisel just sliding it on there and that makes it so that the joint is actually hid when you go on to the apron and makes a very strong notch hmm. so okay i guess we can go over here and show you the belt all thing, huh? yeah okay and while you're getting over there jim um someone just asked if you can tell a little bit about your background um, My background. Well, your woodworking. Background. Well, yes, I I've been working wood for forty years in Montana. It was the large stuff. I actually built a farm where I built a house and shop and barn and all the fencing and everything. I built a farm in Montana, and uh, that was. Big word working. Also, during my journeys, I built canoes and boats, recurve boats. So I've been a woodworker for 40 years, but when I came to Sitka, we we're too cheap to buy furniture, so I had to make it. So um, uh, it's just I fished all summer up here for the last 20 years, and in the uh, fall and winter, I did woodworking, and I have some projects I've done, big furniture projects that have taken me two years to complete. And we'll see some of those later uh, upstairs, some of the finished projects. So, but anyway, the, one of the really cool parts of all this inlay work and stuff are what's known as these bell flowers. And uh, it's quite the process in itself. And another deal where jigs had to be built and tools made. To start out, oopsie. Oh no. Oh, oh. I didn't swear there now. You, uh, <laughs> you, you cut out the bell flowers out of a 16th inch piece of poly. You do that with a carving chisel and you just stamp it and cut it out. So this is what you got. Here, let me show you that. And as you can see, I needed about a million of these. I, can you, there? There it is. Okay. And after you get them cut out, you do what's called sand shading, where you put them in real fine, hot sand, I don't know, for a while, minute or so, until you get a little burned edge on her like that. And that's what gives that texture right there. Got it? So, and the way this works is you, I, I, I can show you right there actually. Perfect. You glue these on with hot high glue. I got little 
that a hot I glue here on a little burner. And you glue them on and then you take an X-Acto knife and you trace it and then you route out where that tracing is and inlay the bell flowers. Let's see if this is ready. Oh, this one got a little scorched. A little oh no, much. here, hold it up so we can really see it. I left it, it. Too, too long, but that's the way you do it. <laughs> happens. It happens. So there, but the way you do this is you do all of inlay these outer pieces first, like so, mm -hmm. and then you put a piece of wood with packing tape on there, glue them in and press them in, leave that overnight. And then you go and do the center one. Do the same thing, piece of wood with packing tape, glue it overnight. And then you do these little round pieces of holly, balls, glue it, <laughs> same procedure. And then you do it these rings, which are just really bear cats, I tell you. To even be able to do those rings, because to cut them, you have to make holly veneer plywood. Whereas you take the grain and you stagger it 90 degrees. And here, right here, is you make so many of these, you got to make a place to even put them. <laughs> and so that you don't spill. And these are the little round things. And there's two pieces of veneer there. So, so you make a million and hopefully you won't have to use them all. <laughs> So, and then another thing that's kind of interesting, all of these are miter. All these strained little bitty miter joints and this one on the top of the legs, you go from round to that. Here, Here's the jig I made. And you can see those miters there. And here's the jig I made to, you cut all the miters with a chisel. There's a jig, these go in there like this. And I take a chisel and chop. And you can see right straight across. And the same thing you do with the round, which is two pieces laminated over a round little thing. Lots of steps, lots and lots of steps. Lots of little tricks. Here is the deal that goes on the bottom of the, you have to make to go on the bottom of your router bit to route these grooves because it's curved to be able to do that. <laughs> here, here is the edging piece that goes on that, that uh, edges to keep it that far away from here. <laughs> Say there's tricks. You think it's all, this is a cool deal here too. Here's how you figure out where these bell flowers are. Right? Got a pattern. Pattern here. And you line that up with the center and the top there, and then you dimple these holes and you'll get little dimples. Can you see the little dimples? In there, and that's where the tip of the bell flowers go. Uh -huh. So you get the bell flowers inlaid and then you sand them down and then you're ready for the next step, which I haven't done yet, which I'm waiting to catch my Zen. It's called a paternian. It's little ovals right there that are cut out on the, the scroll saw and a fret saw. And each one of those, the leaves, everything's a different veneer of wood. And it's quite the procedure in itself. So as soon as I get my Zen back, I'll, I'll start in on that. And there'll be one. They'll go, they'll go right there. Uh, how many total hours do you think you'll have in the table when it's done? <laughs> well, let me say, I started in September. <laughs> Lots of hours. Like I said, when you can figure everything I made to be able to make it. So, of course, the next one, 
would be easier to make, that's for sure, because I will, I'll be able to cruise through it. But I never do, I always do one offs for some reason. I guess because it, after I get through this, I really never want to make another thing like that. But maybe not this one, because I, I really have enjoyed this. Inlay, you know, it's, it's kind of staggering if you've never done it before. But once you do it and are able to accomplish it, it's, it's you know, you can tap yourself on the back. Say, good job. Yeah. So, but that's the way to do it is just go slow, take it easy. Anybody can do it. You just. I'm going to disagree with that, but. You, know, you just make it so you can't fail. And what inspired you to tackle, like, a card table this oh, hard. Actually, I had the plans for this. I bought this 15 years ago because <laughs> I seen it and I wanted to make it. There's lots of things that I've seen basically in the annals of fine woodworking. And I said, whoa. And it's just, I've, I'm self-taught in everything I do. So it was just a progression in my learning experience that I did. Uh, can I show you another? Cool little deal, real quick. Oh ah. When was this hard table? When would it have been made originally? Well, this is a reproduction of one that was built in 1804 in Baltimore. And like I say, America came out of the uh, uh, the, the the big war that with the Brits, and uh, the the federal period started, and they were building furniture uh, of their own kind of design and stuff. And it was a really neat period of American furniture making. You know, the furniture made back in then with no power tools hardly and all this thing. And it was some of the best, most meticulous furniture work ever made. And it's just with patience and sharp hand tools. <laughs> this is a deal that I've seen. I haven't finished it yet. That I've seen. This in fine woodworking magazine, and I just had to try. This is what I am, just to see what it was like. But uh, it's these Chinese three-way miter joints that really you don't even need. Them. Oh, whoa! That's the joint. And then it goes into that. I've already glued, I glued the top together, but it's similar. But try to cut that out sometime if you want practice. That's all with hand tools. No way. <laughs> and I'm gonna make a tuffet or something out of it. I think what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, this is oak and this is maple. I'm gonna ebonize this oak. So it's black, and then do an elk skin tough at top. What does ebonize mean? Uh, well, there's lots of ways. The way you do it, oak is high in tannins. So you can ebonize it by doing, you put some steel wool in a mixture of white vinegar, and it eats up the steel, the vinegar does, and makes hydrogen sulfide gas and stuff and it will react with the tannins in the oak and it actually kind of makes it purplish. But you do that and then you take like a water-based black dye and put on it. And, and even Minwax makes an ebony dye. And that some of the furniture, I'll show you this, some ebonized furniture I've done. It makes it so it, it looks like ebony, it really does. It's, it's beautiful. But that I just had, I seen this joint and I just had to try it. <laughs> and it's tough to get it all thing out, but you know, I originally, I did a few of them uh, with uh, uh, hand tools, but then if you can see that slit up there, I figured out how that, that's a jig to do that with the table saw. <laughs> all those cuts Every, everything's got a piece in every cut mm -hmm. so yeah you know the old adage you you give a lazy man a job to do something hard you'll figure out an easier way to do it exactly 
Well, that's pretty much the deal on the that project. Uh, that was what I really am into these days is turning. If you turn around there, you, you can kind of say, I built that and that's my turning station. And it's uh, got just about everything you need to, if you're a turner in there. Um, I And you did most of these handles, right, Jim? Oh, no, I didn't do most of them. I did some of them. You did some of them? Yeah. Which ones did you do? Well, the ones that are more feminine looking, of course. <laughs> the Betty Boop type. <laughs> oh, cool. But see, this is how I hollow out big things, this tool. And a big, heavy, long thing like this makes it stable. And I just mm -hmm. love this. This is a great. Uh, so this whole table here is pretty cool. Lots of junk, <laughs> lots of junk. Right on, do you wanna go inside then? Pardon? Do you wanna go sure. inside then? Go inside now. Let's Perfect. See. So what I do in my turning thing, I turn things pretty much a lot of times green or they still got moisture in them. And then I paint them with the PBA solution. It's called a vinyl acetate. And that's so that everything will dry really slow. And I give it, you know, a lot of things I'll give a year. Uh, these are dry. This is won't take that long. It's some spruce that Zach LaFerrier gave me. And I like the spruce for some of my basket weave projects because it's nice and white and mm -hmm. vanilla. And here's a piece of my son had done a project with growing mushrooms on an alder stump. And this is the wood that came out of that project when he was done mm -hmm. with the mushroom. And those jars and stuff are, and the jars and bowls are more like the inventory that you have at the gallery too, yes. right? Yes, and this is a spalted alder bowl. Yeah. And, and Jim, I, I just for people that might not know, the spalted is the, that mushroom process, right? The, the well, process, it's the, just, no, it, yeah, it's, it's the, uh, ceiling. Uh, the um, fungi that attacks the wood and there's uh, different ones for different uh, uh, species of wood. A lot of times the alder gets pretty cool because you get the, the white streaks. A lot of the other ones like the birch, you get a lot of black streaks. And that's all due to a specific set, type of, of fungi that attacks the wood. It's basically rot. It's, what it is. it's like blue it's cheese rotten, makes it, it fancy. Is. And we, you know, our environment here lets us have some very nice conditions that uh, uh, help things along. So, well, should we go see some of the other stuff? Yeah, let's do it. As you can see, I've got wood everywhere. I don't want to see the blanks of wood, wood everywhere. Here's some wood that Zach gave me, some spruce. I use for guitar wood. Guitar wood? Yes, a nice spruce. I'm going to build it. Right on. More wood so storage. Let's just showing off your wood storage. After I paint them uh, with the PVA solution, then I store them. They're turned and stored in here. And they're turned so they're thick. The adage is one inch uh, per inch of diameter. So a 10 inch bowl would have a one inch thing. And see, these are all real thick. And then when I turn them again, they'll uh, uh, turn down quite a ways. As you can see, they warp as they're drying. Uh, the tree goes this way, you get most of your shrinkage in and out, and not so much this way. So it causes it work. So we've got some birch here, some more of that. Uh, here's some more of that fungi uh, mushroom log and all kinds of woods from up here. Willow is a beautiful wood here and lots of turns there and some, some very big projects over there. Yeah, this one's fun. It's got a literal hole in it. <laughs> So these are drying, waiting 
We need to be made into something. Oh. And you did these stairs too, right, Jim? Oh, yes. They're not finished yet, so I'm sure my wife will point that out to you. <laughs> And this inlay here. So well, one of the reasons I like turning in the bowls is I get to see my successes and failures in relatively short order. Uh, a lot of my furniture, like that thing there, takes a while. Uh, this, during this COVID this last year, I've been semi-productive. I've made four chairs in that table. And I think a bunch of bowls. Here's one of the chairs I made. Here. Here's a stool I made there. All these stools I made. And this is a very comfortable chair I made here. Can confirm, it's very comfortable. Okay, and then basically I made everything in this room and quite a bit in the bedroom too. <laughs> I'm running out of places to put things. My house. My house. I'm sure everybody else too. If you want something, holler. <laughs> so this is the cadenza that I said it took me two years to complete in between fishing. And this is the ebonized wood that I was talking about. That's ebonized stuff on the bottom. And this is a magic credenza. We try to give people the illusion that we're not a bunch of fools that sit and watch TV all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so we did <get> it. <laughs> and that octopus is from the gallery, isn't it, Jim? Yes, that's from Marcus. I bought that for my wife for our 50th anniversary. So there's the credenza. There's the Maloof rocker I built. It is very comfortable. Oh, we got to show them your antler tree. Pardon? Your antler tree. Yeah, I Here's a basket weave illusion. This is the whole, Pat asked me if I named my things. I think I called this a, is the slings and arrows of drinking cobalt martinis during the COVID crisis. I don't know if there's such a thing as cobalt martinis, but I love that color, <laughs> cobalt. Uh, do that, to, I think those with these. This is the pens I use. Oh, you just paint those with pens? Uh, pardon? You just paint them with pens? Yes, with uh, the India problem. ink, fiber pastel. You have to use a type of ink that will react to the finish that you're going to put on it. I just want to say that even the garbage cans in Jim's house are amazing. I had this bright idea. I had all this oak scrap that I could utilize my scrap by making segmented bowls. That's a lot of work. <laughs> so, but yeah, right. I think this one is another segmented one. And there's seven species of wood in here and 441 pieces. 441 pieces? Mm -hmm. Wow. Rad. Got a little break from the snow here, huh? Yeah. Novel idea. It's uh, April, Kofi Springs. Here's the high chair that I built for my grandkids. Built two of them and it grows as they grow. There was a hoop here that went here with a piece of leather so they couldn't slide out when they're babes. But it was a really nice high chair. They're too old now. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is kind of what I love doing now, these turnings. But this is what I call Jim's stash and ash. 
and you should be able to figure out that. You can put your pot in here until you die from smoking too much pot, and then you put your ashes in there. So, uh, but that is more difficult than it looks, putting thread in there. And how do you get that thread in there? I have a little jig with a router bit that mm -hmm. turns at a million miles an hour. This is holly on the top, and this is a moose horn top right there. And again, that's another one. But yeah, and I'll get a good shot on these. This here, this Voss, this was out of a relatively rotten piece of alder that was too porous and rotted. I had to stabilize that, this. And to stabilize it, you put it in this solution, it's what's called cactus juice. Then you put it in a tube under vacuum for two hours. So it impregnates it with this solution. And then after that, you dry it out a little bit and then you put it in the oven for two, three hours. And it makes it like a hardwood. It's incredible. It really makes it tough because it's not rotten anymore. This one stabilized, this one stabilized, and this one stabilized, which you have to do on wood like that. Mm -hmm. And what is the blue in here? Uh, turquoise. I, I put a lot of turquoise. <laughs> just, I like it. Here's a piece that. It, this is a piece of spruce that my buddy Zach found on the beach. It's just an incredible piece of wood. So, and that's another nice thing, a piece about Turner. You don't want to buy any of this wood. <laughs> you find it. <laughs> Find it in somebody's wood pile around the beach. Uh, or you have just some friends. Oh, and this, people ask you, you know, what can you do with these turners? And I said, well, they're nice just to look at if you ask me. But this is actual one you can put water in, put plants, and made a vase. And Kim's trying to do something with some geraniums here to make it look, look alive. We haven't got any real flowers because it's, it's April and winter. <laughs> So, April Fools, Badoom. But as you can see, Pat even asked me, what can you put in these bowls? And we put, <laughs> you look around, there's got stuff there everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cute. But yeah. But if you look around, there's bowls everywhere. <laughs> Bring in another one that has these beautiful turquoise chips. Gorgeous. That's a fun What's shape, this? Jim. Pardon? What's this one? That's mountain ash. It's a little small, a little rotted. Well, that's rad. That's birch here. And it's just so fascinating how they, all the different woods have such different characteristics. Yeah, and it turned different. It's like I tell you. I start with a chunk of wood, and I really don't know what's going to be when I until it starts turning. Right. And so this that's called a natural edge, whereas you turn it different with the bark out, and you leave the bark on. Can you feel it? Does it have like? Oh yeah, yeah. fun texture. Bark. Yeah. What's neat with sometimes with that bark? I just love the pattern the in between here, that precambium layer. Mm -hmm. You get some really cool effects sometimes. So I don't have very many of the uh, I would say spruce. Let's see this one's a keeper for this. Yeah. Now that's a spruce one and it actually had a lot of sap and stuff in it, but it's still pretty cool. Yeah. A lot of times with the Sitka spruce that goes closer to the salt, you get a lot of this shimmering, it seems like. And look at how tight grain that is. I mean, the grain on that, you can't even see the width of part on it. Yeah, it's a even. very tight grain. Oh, great. I don't know if... We have any of these, but these orbs that you do, yeah, I, I just think they're so beautiful. But 
Oh, oh man, we're getting it. This one's got a really kind of a neat story to it. Four years ago, I had cancer and I went and got operated for kidney cancer. And I didn't, wasn't able to get much wooden stuff. So I ended up cutting my chopping block up. That was this a little piece of hemlock, but probably like a yin and yang bowl because it just, I love the little marks that it made. Mm -hmm. on it and it has all oh, got some nice coloration to it. Now this one is alder and here's what I say about that drying process how they work. This one warped and I couldn't turn it again because it was so warped. The tree ran like this and so you see it's wider in one direction than it is the other so I just hand sanded this is what I did. How many hours did that take? I couldn't put it back on the lathe. <laughs> Great on. Now, the other one up there, as you notice, you can see a couple of them. I had a vicious spittoon face for a while, but <laughs> everything I was turning turned out to be a spittoon. I don't know if I was watching too many Westerns or what. Rad. <laughs> That deck out there, I don't know if I told you about that. Uh, nope. See, it's in the background. Really intricate cut, cuttings and stuff. Can't see it with snow on it. Yeah. But I built that in the shop. Oh. And Judd and I lifted up on one of them big extended frames. You want to talk about these chairs? Yeah, these are, these are the most comfortable outside chairs. They're all laminated mahogany. There's eight layers in this one on this turn. I think there's five on this. And they've been out in the weather now. And here's the, the mahogany tea table goes with them. And that's turned and oh wow. And you can really see the difference there. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's what it was naturally. Yeah. Right. That yeah. mahogany's just stood up here. I, yeah, I just, you know, you, you got the choice. You can refinish them or every year or bring them inside. I really like that gray. That piece of teak furniture down there, that's 30 years old. Yeah, that bench? That's weathered outside Montana and Alaska for 30 years. So it's pretty hold. good. <laughs> I think it will. Mahogany is good wood. All the fasteners are, are blocked. So we'll see. It's a lot of work, I tell you what. That was unbelievable. A lot of cutting on a bandsaw. Each of them veneers are like an eighth inch in thick. There's eight in each leg. <sighs> Oof. Been laminated. Uh huh. Have we bored everybody to tears yet? Oh, stop. I'm sure people are loving this. You want to come over here? <laughs> I know I am. Oh, I am. Good. You're getting a lot of uh, open mouth, like, oh my gosh, emojis. <laughs> well, you know, uh, you, you do things in your life and you, you, I don't know about you, but I've had these natural progressions where it seems I get to one phase and I need to find some way to justify my existence. And, so for an old fool, this this is pretty good way to do it. Yeah. But I, I feel pretty good about myself anyway when I get out of the shop. Mm -hmm. um, and I just love your your enthusiasm for the wood and that you know, oh, yeah, that, that you really you know make sure that trees aren't cut down to make the beautiful things that you make, but that you use wood that's found. I'm sure, you know, it's both made it, but you know, now that a lot of stuff, they even mark as sustainable, that, you know, yeah. and things. But as far as the turnings, yeah, this is wood that'd be 
blow up somebody's chimney for the most part. Right. Stuff on the beach. Someone would like to know how you do the oh, weaving this, pattern. This beading is, is pretty amazing. I'd probably show you easier with that other, with the COVID. With the COVID one? Yeah, it's got bigger beads and stuff. Show you the process. You got enough light in here? You want me to turn some lights on? Oh, I'd love some lights, yeah. Thank you. Oh yeah, much better. So there's this one. I, this is my COVID bowl. And each bead is done what's called a beading tool. And it's just a, a concave tool that you put on your lathe rest and it carves out a perfect bead. And this, this is hemlock, so it was relatively easy. But like some woods, like spruce and stuff, boy, it's a pain. I have to do it part way, paint it with sanding sealer, then go the rest of the way. It can be a nightmare. But it's nice thing about spruce. It's nice white wood and uh, real vanilla. So anyway, that's the beatings. And then the uh, uh, vertical lines are done with the wood bird. The, each one. I think there's like 4,000 beads in this one. So it takes, it's another one of the projects that takes a while. And, and this, this weave here takes a while too. It's, I don't do anything. I try to make things go, I go out of my way to make things difficult for myself. Yeah. I Can I see that outer edge? Yeah. Are these, is that wood burned? The, this, yeah. the little yeah. pattern on the top? Yeah. yeah. That's, okay. yeah that's it's a hair, cool herringbone. Yeah, like leather weave. Mm -hmm. and everything. All this originally was done, it's called Basket Weave Illusion, and it was originally done by wood turners to emulate Southwest Indian designs and stuff. And there's some fabulous work out there, and it's, it's difficult to do, but it's a, kind of a lot of fun. And then, you know, you go and you find yourself a little pattern you're comfortable with, and you paint it. And yeah, there you go. It, it's just, it's one of them projects that you take turning and make it more difficult and you enjoy looking at it. So, and the same thing with this, this is eighth inch bead, but these are eighth inch beads too, I guess they're the same bead. I thought it was three sixteenth anyway. But the, the beauty of this one is these, that's hard to get to turn out. So they take a lot more time than the usual gym stash mash. Uh, if anybody has any more questions, go ahead and pop Someone those. Asked, do you have to buy your mahogany? mahogany. The, oh, the mahogany did. Yeah, I not only have to buy it, I have to go to Seattle. And I'm not about to buy it and have a sense if I pick it out down there. I got there's two spots in Seattle that I go to, to look for wood. So it involves a plane ride and going down there, and then they ship it on AML and it comes up here. Yeah. Wish I didn't because it's expensive, <laughs> you know, mahogany oak and stuff. But you know, the woods up here just aren't furniture wood, they're just not tough enough. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite wood to work with? Uh, for turning or for working? Yes, and yes, and well, no, I kind of like it all. Um, I like the oak that I've done my furniture, and I like the cherry for the chairs, although cherry is a pain to, it, pain to uh, finish. It gets blotchy. You gotta do lots of special steps, steps on that. But uh, uh, no, I like all hardwoods. I like maple a lot. I use maple on like, a lot of my jigs and things. Um, yeah, all this, see, our woods here, this is a mountain ash. And our woods just simply aren't strong enough to hold threads because they, the thread will break wow. with them. So I inset, these are all inset with maple. Oh. Maple, poplar veneer on the top and bottom, poplar veneer, poplar veneer, ebony. I always put ebony on the list. And it's, it's always a little dowel I got in here. So, and this is holly on this one. But I turned a lot of horn also. Mm -hmm. Which is just beautiful. 
Uh, do you use black walnut? Uh, I do. Uh, let's make out of black walnut. Oh, that chair. <laughs> This is a cool little stool. Very comfortable. It's kind of for you know. I call it. I put it over there. I call it the bad girl's chair. Chair Kim when she's been bad. At it. That's what's sitting in the bad girl chair. But this is a Maloof inspired chair with Maloof joints. This little deal here. Originally, the plan called for just these legs, no cross bracing anything. I'm a Turner. I didn't think it was strong enough for a big oaf like me to be sitting in it that way. So I put all the structural stuff in. And what do you call these joints? Maloof joints? Yeah, Maloof. Sam Maloof was the one that came up with the design like on that rocker and stuff. And it's this joint right here. See how that's all routed uh, in there? It's just a very strong, tough joint. In the back too. Let's see. See how that... Mm -hmm. Envelops the legs and it holds it. It's a very strong book. So, yeah, black oak hall that wrote rang a bell. I did make black hole. I got some downstairs. I was going to make a rocker out of it. I never did. Okay, there's moose horn on the top of that one. And this is sheep horn. And it's so beautiful. It just, it's, it's like a gem. Oh, yeah, it is. And this is an Australian burl wood called Red Molly here. Um, and what kind of tools do you use to cut the horns? Pardon? What kind of tools do you use to cut the horns? Uh, my lathe tools. Great. Yeah, just the same tools. Yeah, they cut really well. You cut carboid tools. Might have to sharpen them a little more, but uh, no, the, they they cut really great. Right on. Only problem is I'm running out of horns. In fact, I even I like to take. Yeah, running out of buttons. Horns. The buttons are what I call iron. Ring. At these ends, they're, they're solid. If you go into the horn up here, they're pretty porous in the center. Uh huh. But I'm starting to cut some of the buttons off of these. I'm running out of buttons. So anybody out there have any buttons? Send me. <laughs> or sheep horn. Someone just asked, what was the first thing that you made with wood as a kid? Um, and who is introduced or inspired you to wood making? Well, I got an interesting story there too. When I, my parents, we my grandparents lived with us, but my parents, and grandparents were some of the nicest people in the world. And we had a friend, Teddy, who was a dwarf, who was 39 inches tall, and came to live with us when I was like four years old. And my whole life, you know, I had at home lived with us. And Ted, Teddy was the strongest person in the world. He really was. The stuff he had to go through, you know. And, you know, I've always kind of cringed because people were always staring at us. But it took me a long time before I realized the strength. But he was a woodworker. I could show you that he refinished some of the furniture down there, downstairs. And, and he was built up. And I just go stare and watch him do things. And, and then when I, like I say, was too cheap to buy furniture with Kim and I were first married, you know, we were 19, 20 years old. And I just built it, built all our furniture out of dimensional lumber, you know, when you got one by 10. Closet, bought a saw and, and uh, built all the furniture in our house. Then, huh. you know, it was crap. But, you know, <laughs> I, I was going through this stage. Kim's pretty short, so I was trying to make her feel small. So I built high stuff. The bed was really high. The table was. <laughs> I was messing with her. <laughs> so anyway, I just then I got into uh, building the canoes, which. I don't know if you've ever built boats. It's, it's almost a sensual experience, the curves and boats are cool. And uh, I built like five canoes, uh, strippers mm -hmm. on a cedar and Sitka spruce. Yeah. And they're beautiful. And I raced, see, I raced canoes. 
We, we made an 18 foot uh, cedar canoe that weighed 40 pounds wow. that we raised. Wow. Yeah. Um, Christy wants to know if you've ever made matryoshka dolls. Pardon? If you've ever made the like nesting dolls. No, no. I'll, I'll leave indigenous stuff to indigenous stuff. To the Russians, I'll leave that day because it. I am amazed at them. The, 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 there's a process that I don't think I could do it a very good job. Of. I don't see any reason for copying them. I, I kind of got my thing. I've never really seen people do exactly what I do. So, and everyone, I have yet to make anything alike. Everything's different. <laughs> just, Sets aren't your thing. I don't make anything the same size. I kind of got a basic shape. I like this, yeah, the Betty Boop shape. You know? And and this one, I was just really admiring how the how the grain you know goes through you know from from his top you know and and down into the rest of it. It just it's so beautifully matched. Yeah. Cool. Well, we're at 551. Does anybody else have any questions? If you do, speak now or forever hold your peace. And I can't say thank you enough, Jim. I, I just think it's inspiring. That thank you, you know. You need... Being a fellow artist, you know how it is. We all wish to be discovered someday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But truly, you're, you know, the, the love of your craft is so, oh, yeah. so obvious yeah. in what you're doing. It's so if you're obvious. doing it just for money, you're in the wrong game because, you know, you're talking about me might be making two, three dollars an hour. Mm. <laughs> we did that fishing, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, every year, you know, you get from the gallery, you get your W-2 board and say, God, dang, I felt like I made more. <laughs> And then you go, you figure all your expenses, everything you bought. Oh, I hope the accountant goes for this. Oh, oh. So anyway, mm -hmm. it is what it is. Like I said, that's the storm. And my little slipper spoon holder. Yeah, might as well shut this all the way out, huh? Everybody needs one of those of their stove, huh? And the other side, they can see that, that it was a loose one that way. Like oh, there it is. Hello. Well, Kim had said that her friend Robert was making some of those. I said, oh, I, I can probably I guess make I can. Right on. Robert, Robert makes ceramic ones and he's unbelievable. Okay. Well, I think unless there are more questions. Call a wrap, but thank you ever so much. Really, really wonderful to see your things again. Well, thank you. I didn't know I could talk that much. <laughs> I had confidence in you. I think my lips are crapping up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Well, thank you everyone for coming. Um, we'll be back. Do we have another one in two weeks? I'm not sure who our artist will be in two weeks, but I will let you know, shortly. I'm hoping perhaps a mox moccasin baking display. I, but we'll see. We'll, we'll let you know soon. Thank you again.